Previously on Resident Evil Revelations. What took you two so long? At least we're here. What's up with Veltro? Straight into the depths of hell. It's a security token. It means we can scavenge the data on that radar. What the? What happened? Boy, have you heard from Gill and Parker yet? Their investigation let them out to sea. Lost track of the ship. This is Jackass. I got the coordinates on the ship. I'm sending them now. That's not far. Chris here. I received the coordinates. We're running out of time. Damn it. Ryan, we're on our way. Hey guys, and welcome to part 7 of the Resident Evil Revelations playthrough. We're now on to episode 6. Cat and Mouse, not to be confused with those popular characters. In Tom the... and Jerry? Yep. So anyway, we've found out that Chris has found the location of the Zenobia and he's on his way to board it. Where's his panda? No. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem to have it. Uh, Brian, I specifically requested my battle panda. Where the hell is it? Now, if that, if, that, if, if all Brian were mad, do you think Jessica would be okay with that or would she think, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> then again, the that that would explain her outfit here. Yeah, you can see her right leg is completely exposed for no reason whatsoever. So now we're storming the Queen Zenobia. Oh yeah, time for more roid rage. No plan. Just now, unfortunately, Chris is one of those characters in the story where you can't choose the skills. Yeah, you can't change your weapons either. Mm -hmm. Actually, so you're stuck with what you have. Aye. Which is, for the case of Chris, it's just the G36 assault rifle, the M3 shotgun from RE5, and the standard 92F. Yeah. Grab the map. I've got the ship interior map. Now, let's go down the elevator. Didn't Jell and Parker already pick up a map, so how would you know <laughs> where the map is? Well, maybe it's a spare map. Why do you need several maps for your one ship? Have you ever been to like one of those gigantic stores where it's large, big, and you end up getting yeah. lost? By the way, these guys infinitely respawn, I believe, so... Yeah, so do your best to go past this section. Yeah, so right there, if the game detects you moving while an enemy's trying to attack you, it won't let you dodge. You have to press the analog stick up at the right moment. So at this point, I'm just trying to get all the collectibles and then just get out of the room so I can save my ammunition. This part's a nightmare on Inferno because there's like at least twice as many oozes and you can get stun locked out of your damage animation just stun locked and killed easily. It's so annoying. And there's a new grenade here, folks. It's called the Pulse Grenade. Basically, it's a stun grenade. It's the only way to stun ooze, Rachel, actually. Because mm -hmm. I've never been able to stun her with gunfire. Ooh. Ooh, that's a long damage. Yep. Yeah, the Pisers, the the one with the claws, do a lot Pensers, more damage. Yeah. Aye. If that were Inferno, you'd probably be dead right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, would you want it as difficult as it is in RE5 Professional <laughs> where everything kills you in one hit? Well, it's kind of like that anyway in Inferno. <laughs> I believe that door's locked, actually. No, no it's not. <laughs> Did not. Wrong. You assumed wrong, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting Jessica behind, taking all the damage. She can't <laughs> die. Go, my trusty AI. Well, if this were RE5 or Veronica, you'd be thinking otherwise. <laughs> More handgun ammo here. Right. Unfortunately, the ammo packs that Jill Pat pick up doesn't count towards Chris here. Yeah, which is a real pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's a lot of pulse grenades. Well, it looks like we Does might... he start with two, actually? Um, I don't think so. I think I just collected them on my way. <laughs> well, there's more grenades lying about. It's like we're preparing for something. An onslaught. <laughs> oh, good. It's the loading doors. Obvious, obvious loading door is obvious. <laughs> uh, well, at least they designed them as if it was like the captain's wheel or a pirate ship. Again, like... Oh yeah, this is funny. Yeah, if it wasn't obvious enough, the the geek has got a crush on the the hottie. That tra that traditional trope. 
I love how he changes his voice for a bit and then just goes right back to his regular one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, now we're heading down to the casino because we need to head to the the bilge. And yay. that's it. Access through there is through the back room of the casino. More gambling, yay. Well, something, something's banging. Something's banging, yeah. But before, before I go there, I want to make sure I collect everything around here. And what's in there? Two skag deads! He's count towards your total completion for scanning everything, by the way, so make sure you scan them. Alright, because these are the ones that don't talk. Yeah, the, the comms office of skag dead is a separate entry for scanning every enemy in the game as well. The game doesn't tell you that, though. And as you can see here, folks, the pulse grenade even works on them. Oh, yeah. Just putting those muscly fists to use again. Yep. These things also have another stunning animation where they'll like stand around a bit and they'll look like they're dizzy where they're spinning around. But it's All almost right. impossible to tell that they're stunned unless you know about that actually. It's much easier to know when the, when it's the, the comms officer because he'll say like stop and all that. Wow, you got really lucky, lucky with that stun actually. All right. stunned him really quickly. And that's him down. Yeah. And what's he dropped? The Trident Key. It really is the Spencer Mansion again. <laughs> How, how, how about that? Spencer managed to take Aquaman's trident, shrunk it down into the size of a key. <laughs> <laughs> how will we rule Atlantis now? <laughs> I will rule Atlantis through the power of this key! <laughs> right, this bit is a new area, folks. And here's the last type of ooze. The chunks. These will explode on you. Yeah, very high damage. You can actually... If your control was good, you can actually like turn around, like have your back face to them, back into them, and, and then as soon as you hear the sound effect of them welling up, run forward, and that will mess you, provided you have enough space for that. Alternatively, you can go for the um, the legs, which will stop them in their tracks, and then they'll just self self destruct. I say it like it's a robot, but it's a bioorganic weapon. They're weak to handgun, the explosives. So just keep going for its legs, and then, boom. Down you go. <laughs> uh, the AI doesn't die. Uh, I don't like it when you go for a weak spot and the game doesn't actually like let you stun it. No, I don't like it when you're trying to shoot the weak spot, the enemy, the creature through the little gaps, and then it's treating it as an invisible wall. The worst ones with that were the damn Duvalia with the armored legs in RE5. Those things were so annoying. Like, I understand that, like, if this was on the 3DS, but really, go. they couldn't update that for the consoles. Now, when you fall on your ass like that, all you can do is aim a handgun or throw a grenade. You can't do anything else. You can move very slightly, just move, change your direction and that, but you can't actually move anywhere. Aye, they wouldn't improve that until RE6. Do you think RE6 did give it a little bit too much to... I think the real problem with the control in that is the cover. It's too easy to put yourself into cover by mistake. And the cover system's a bit clunky in that. Well, I'm talking about like how limited your movement is. It kind of works for the old games because it was meant to be survival horror, but then now it's 6, it gives you a lot more m mobility. At the same time, though, it was very frustrating if you were trying to fight hunter hunters or lickers. Hmm. Because those things could like jump in front of you, and by the time you turn around, your head's bye-bye. <laughs> And remember, folks, the quick turn wasn't in Resident Evil 1 or 2, the originals. Aye. So you had to slowly turn left or right. I would have loved it if Chris went off in the elevator and the elevator and Jessica was still on the on the balcony as it <laughs> went down. Chris, you left me behind. Uh, too bad. So sad. Goodbye. <laughs> Somebody. Anybody. I'm getting deep blue sea flashbacks. Have you ever seen that? No. Basically, it's a movie about a scientist, some a team of scientists who try to figure out how to destroy um, cancer cells from building up in a human brain by taking some tissue samples from a shark's brain. Yeah. But the pro but the side effect is it makes the sharks more intelligent. So Neptune from Ari One only even more dangerous. Yes, and that they get so smart that the sharks actually outwit the scientists and start flooding the facility. Yeah. That was one of the scariest moments in Remake, actually, the Aqua Ring area. Because mm -hmm. the first time you go out there, you have to run through a gauntlet of 
mm -hmm. tiny sharks, and if you get caught by the big mama shark, it's the game over. Yeah. Like. Then there's a puzzle you have to do, which is limited time. Mind you, they won that. Uh, they didn't make them a friend to the remake. They were in the originals, but they, they weren't as much as a threat. Like, they were just stuck in. Wasn't the water nowhere near as high, actually? No, it was only, like, half flooded, like, in this game, actually, but the mo what, but the mother shark can still kill you in one hit. Mm. But it didn't have that whole aqua ring in the remake. Yeah, it was in the like original the corridors. No. I know. Now, this part on Inferno will throw a skag dead at you while you're trying to deal with all this oh, shit. And there'll be sake. like tons of oozes in this section. It is ridiculous. Yeah, I've never but I never can be bothered to go out of my way to do Inferno mode. There'd be at least like twice as many oozes here on Inferno. Again, no with a skag dead chasing. <laughs> Notice something here, Stevie? This section's not flooded. Yeah. Why not? Kind of odd. <laughs> now Tosta goes like, have a laugh on me! Uh, I, I want to conserve my herbs, so I'll just throw grenades at them. Can you imagine that if, you can, if you're able to use herbs as a weapon? <laughs> How? Like create some poisonous herb that spews out poisonous gas that affects B.O.W.s. Uh, these things are infected with like all sorts of viruses already. I no, think you know me, like, like an anti-B.O.W. gas in the, within the herb. You'd have to know that the herb would actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the graphics with the machine gun and ammo and all are the same as RE5. Right. I think the red the Red Hawk ammo is the same as RE4 actually. Um, it's slightly different actually. Same base design but different s style. Yeah, where's all the water? Yeah. We'll find that soon enough, but watch out, there's lots of pincers and oozes here. Can the pincer ones grab you as well when they're yes, I believe on the so. ground like that? Yes, I believe so. The uh, you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> I've done this kind of thing before. Okay. And this is not flooded. <laughs> what dark magic is this? <laughs> uh, did we take a wrong turn? <laughs> Jessica, did you mess with the GPS? <laughs> did you want to go to Pandaland on the, on the cruise? <laughs> but no, as it turns out, we're on the Queen Semiramis. This is like the perfect excuse for Capcom to reuse the damn same level structures. <laughs> yep, because <laughs> yes, folks, the ships are exactly the same. Turns out Veltro had two ships during the Terra Grecia panic that they used. So my, meanwhile, but meanwhile, in the Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> no, it cuts back to Joel dead, and then it goes to the game over screen. <laughs> That'd be realistically annoying. So here we go, full underwater swimming controls, folks. And yes, I'll say right that these are better in this game than RE6. Mm -hmm. For one, you got your speed is decent, and you have full mobility control. Oh, pipe. Better watch out, yep. in case you get hit in the head with by some Mangini. <laughs> now, what happens was, what happens is, folks, you need to open that vent so you can get through there. But, but the way you'll know if you're beginning to drown is, but the first, the screen will go grey, and then black substance will be around the corners of your screen. If it completely fills you up, you're going to drown. So it's like uncharted and away with your heads up display. Aye, there's nothing like that in RE6. It's one section of underwater swim where you have like a health bar that shows how much air you have. <clears throat> yeah, and if that ran out, you instantly drowned. <laughs> I think that's actually where we got our first game over when we played through the game years ago. Was it not professional mode? I think, I think you didn't make it in time and then you drowned or something. Aye, I believe so. But that was years ago. Bye bye water. No one likes you. <laughs> Seriously, I don't like underwater <laughs> levels in gaming. I don't think anybody likes underwater levels. Mario is kind of the worst defender though because you can't defend yourself at all. <laughs> but he can breathe underwater somehow. Infinitely. <laughs> well, until time runs out and then his battle royale car explodes. <laughs> right, up here should be some more ammunition and I believe another ammo case. Again, I was you about can... to say, if that was the ammo case, that would be annoying to f annoyingly hard to find without using the scanner right then and there. Well, you need the scanner for some ammo okay. cases. It's still filling up. 
Oh really? I think I might have missed some then. Like that one in the um the build where we first fought Scad Deg in yeah. that little cupboard by the life bar cupboard. If you need you need to scan the middle gap in between those boxes and you'll get an ammo case. I think I might have gotten that one actually. Oh <laughs> fucking fresh <laughs> Die fishies. Again, like with all the horrifying like monsters in this universe, like No with with a creature like barking in this universe, it's the fish that get to you. Yes. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to admit it. There's a sea creeper here, I believe. Nope. I thought there was there would be a sea creeper at the bottom of the stairs waiting for you. Probably on Inferno. <laughs> I love how I destroyed these boxes one chapter early and then they're magically rebuilt. The power's back. We can use it. So now that the power's back on folks, we are, we've shut off the flooding, so that shouldn't affect the rest of the ship. Alright. Excuse me, Parker, I'll perform some Hollywood hacking. And by that, I've just been pressing random buttons and I'll just get what I want. Why don't I just hit it with my axe? <laughs> or get Shao to do it. Karai chuck the, key the keypad for you. <laughs> Literally. Damn, I lost 61 subscribers on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Something like that happens in Dumb Drive 3 and 4 as well, with like things not working mm -hmm. and characters hitting them. <laughs> me too. You know, do you know what Lee Parker's wanted to catch up on his phone there? He wanted to catch up on the latest video of Five Feds. Dude, we're not sightseeing. <laughs> so now we've got Days 1 and Damage 2, which means I'm going to replace the... Damage 1 with the Damage 2. Yes, I'm going to put that on the machine gun for now. Or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're right to be. Hmm. There we go. Damage 2. Days, which will increase stopping power on the enemies. And bind. You know, the game doesn't clarify whether or not stopping power is the same as actually stunning an enemy from mm -hmm. melee, which is annoying. Oh, I'm going to increase the firing rate on the sniper yeah, rifle. Yeah, you need the fire rate on the, right, on the bolt action rifle mm -hmm. for it to be most effective. Mm -hmm. With the best fire rate parts in Raid Mode, it's the most overpowered weapon in the game. Especially if you manage to get the gluttony part for it. Well, there is some exclusive weapons in Raid Mode 2 as well. Like the Drake shotgun. There are also new weapons exclusive to the PS4 version, I believe, that are level 50. And uh, they come custom equipped with very special parts and cannot be changed, I believe. But then again, that de but then that depends on if you find them because they're extremely rare. Yeah, it took me quite a while to get. Uh, it's essentially a a wind hat. It's kind of it's the same shotgun Andrew has now, but it fi it doubles all of the firepower. So as you can see, we found the Queen Semiramis. Recycling. You must be on the Queen Zenobia's sister ship. Why do they always refer to machines and all as a she? All right. That's a running, again, a running theme with Resident Evil, well, a lot of, like, key uh, villains or locations or that, like, or characters female. By the way, can we order a new uniform for Jessica? She's missing half of her uh, leg. She's trying to seduce me, and it's not working. <laughs> no, what was that? I'm already taken. No, Panda. no, Chris. Chris and Jessica does a reenaction of that class scene. Mrs. Jessica, you're trying to seduce me. No, uh, no. <laughs> I'm already taken. My heart was stolen away by another. My panda chan. Now watch out because I believe one the of these wall blisters yeah. coming down. Yep. And he's dead. Doesn't take a lot to put them down, but oh, you're gonna pay a big, big, big price. No, I like how when they, when time. they, I like how they fling their arms in the air before they self-destruct. Like why? <laughs> Long ladder is long. As long as Metal Gear Solid free. There's one ladder in that game that plays most of the Snake Eater song as you're climbing up it. It's like the full chorus, actually. At the very least, I hope they've picked up Chris's whereabouts. Because you love Chris. But he's already taken. But Jill and Chris. The panda is his one true love. 
<laughs> but honestly, it's not. I think this, it's about time that Chris and Jill should just get married. Yeah. I get, there was actually like an article like that was that was deep uh, that was debunked by the way it's fake where it said that Chris and Jill got married. So at this point, they they still haven't done anything. Did you hear that? But it's like they've been doing this in, this flirtish relationship since the remake. And it's like, come on, just kiss yeah, and make like, up. It's clear as day that they both really care about each other. Mhm. Mm so now we have to go up to the bridge to the to do the to con to fix the emergency communication radar so we can contact HQ. But of course, there's something on the elevator. This part on Inferno was a major pain in the ass. Now you'd be thinking, what the hell is that That's thing? not creepy at all. We'll find out sooner or later, folks. But here we're just going to have to take a little mini-boss tour by slamming its rocky hand here. The underflesh of that part is its weak spot. And on Inferno it takes a lot of ammo to put down. Basically, mm -hmm. you have to do enough damage. It's kind of like a House of the Dead boss. You have to do enough damage to it ah, in if time. You, if you fail to do that, it'll, it will damage the elevator. I'm Can the elevator be destroyed actually, or is it just your health that's the time? I think it's the health, but I would have liked it if this one, if the elevator was destroyed and it crashed all the way down, that's how you died. Oh, so you're one of those sadists who loves all I'm just saying, characters die. I'm so saying realistically, ways. well, the developers had to program deaths in for some re <laughs> for a reason. Yeah, and it gets much faster as you go on. Mm-hmm. Like on Inferno, it would be spinning so much faster and be much harder to hit. And it does at least twice as much mm -hmm. damage when it hits you. Uh, Parker, are you gonna actually do something? No, I'm just gonna stand here looking awkward, Jill. Jill, look at the view, it's kind of nice, don't you think? <laughs> and that's the elevator working now. Is it gone? Are we in the clear? Um, what do you think? Yes, Jill? Onto the bridge we go. And no, the bridge is not out. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> so, before we continue on, folks, as usual, when you go into a new area, explore. Find everything. Hmm, this is a pretty big room. I wonder if you're going to be doing anything in here. But before we do that, ammo case for the rifle. Just what, just what I need it. Oh, wasn't that the Game Boy Advance Mario? Yeah, where Mario actually had some dialogue. And when he got burned by a fireball in the Mario Bros. arcade game. <laughs> I remember playing that years ago. Uh, I actually reached the max score for Mario Didn't you Brothers. bring that to school, actually? Oh. Right. right, damage free. Ooh. Where am I going to put that? Of course, right. the sniper rifle. Now, this one took me a while because I was trying to figure <laughs> which weapons am I going to take with me. How do I customize? <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, boss time. This is the Dragonaw. It's got a really long and hard name to pronounce. Even I can't pronounce it yeah. very well. Basically, it's a humanoid shellfish, folks. Once it charges forward, the dodge time for that is right before it hits you. Mm -hmm. But the higher difficulties. Go ahead, sir. But the weak spot, folks, are the exposed flesh sections. But you can do this. Get him to hit the extinguisher and he'll be stunned. I want Parker's dialogue. How is it even alive? <laughs> yeah. He almost sounds like a Luigi in a way. Yeah. But this, the big ones are not much of a problem because of their size, but see the tiny little ones in, in raid, raid mode <laughs> where their speed is increased? And they put, oh no, in the later uh, best stages, they put like four of them in a room with you so you get knocked on your ass over and over and over again. But one weapon that does work against them when you have them in raid mode is the grenades. Yes, especially. <laughs> They're especially weak to the hand grenade, I believe. Like, you can just straight up cheese them with enough decoys and explosives. Aye. Now, now when that's it... a shock wave. Yep. It will hit the entire floor. And you're forced to slide on the ground. You the only to... way to avoid it is to pick Oof. up an item. Got lucky there. Yeah, you have a bit of leniency after you take damage on normal, not on infernal difficulty though. <laughs> Parker doing a wonderful job of dodging. I'll there. say this though, the music that's playing right now, it's giving me arrow flashbacks to the villain Prometheus. What? Isn't that season five? That's season five, and that's all I'm saying for those who have not seen it. No, I haven't watched it yet. I still need to get back. But yeah, that's the villain Prometheus. Well, you got really lucky there with that animation. Invincibility frames eye. 
Now on higher difficulty levels, this thing will actually start charging towards you without putting the shell down. Mm -hmm. Which is absolute bullshit. Yep. And that's it. Yeah. Falls apart like a Lego toy. <laughs> Lego Resident Evil. No, then, then I have nowhere the Veltro member that we saw earlier with the gas mask when Chris, when Jill and Parker are way upstairs, the the Veltro guy comes out and he pulls out the Lego instruction manual to build it back. <laughs> I would pay to see a Re Lego Resident Evil game. Like that would be amazing. I would love. It'd be hilarious to see how they like tone everything down, like they did with Lego Jurassic World. Oh, I don't. For, like, comedic purposes. Well, I don't know how they'll do that. Considering how graphic this Crazy. series is. Uh, Anyway, up we go and look what we find. The Beltro key card. Now why are they just leaving that there? <laughs> now if you remember all those saves we couldn't get to before, folks? Now we can open them some for some hidden goodies. And yet in raid mode we somehow might have the power to just open it magically without the key card. <laughs> now there's a handprint coming up here that's really easy to mess, actually. No. Can you imagine that's when you go from the Queen Zenobia and from Joe's perspective it's a handprint but from Chris's perspective it's a paw print. <laughs> a panda. <laughs> Dereliction of duty. There it is right there. That is very easy to mess. But who would, who would think to walk, look in there? Because if you examine this that's it. You can't get it I believe. Yeah. It, it's like it magically disappears. And there's no way it can't no, wait, you can back out of it, actually. So maybe you can go for the thumb handprint if you missed it. Oh, can you imagine if they decided to up... Hey, wait, did they update these puzzles in the Inferno mode to make them harder? I don't know, actually. Not exactly a glutton for punishment to play that over and over again. <laughs> no, can you imagine that if on Inferno mode they took the, the grid puzzles from Saw the video game and put them in here? No. <laughs> <laughs> We have seen some shit that'll turn you white. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you hadn't seen that. I only heard it once. In a clip. How do you know? Oh, Brian. <laughs> he's sign. But he's hiding something. Where's Cole Phelps when you need him? <laughs> you know. You know about the. You know about the self, don't you? Someone bribed you. Fuck yours. <laughs> yeah. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I want sexy mofo is the correct answer. <laughs> Who's that talking? It's a, I'm guessing it's a random sec the head secretary. I think that's Karen Strassman, actually. Already in motion. Okay. Yeah, the satellite that was used to destroy Terra Grecia, it's been reactivated. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Karen Strassman talk, telling him about that there. I wasn't expecting that. That's a nice little surprise. Hmm. Looks like At least I think it is. Oh, the look on your face when you find out you're wrong. <laughs> I hope not. Because I am pretty good at recognizing voices. Who is that, Jameson? <laughs> Parker! <laughs> Parker! Where's that head photo? I don't have one. So that satellite that was activated, it's going to destroy the ships. Here's the thing. The virus is still on the ship, by the way. Because you saw what happened to the fish. The ship's obliterated while the virus is still on it. It'll, It'll infect, infect the war. The war. Can't authorize that. Why not? <laughs> You'll have to find that out on next week's episode of EastEnders. <laughs> ah, what EastEnders? I thought this was Resident Evil. <laughs> I just had to put it in for that dramatic moment. <laughs> so as we finish off episode 6, we'll see you guys in the next part for episode 7. Ta-ta. <laughs> Take this seriously. <laughs>